In this video, I'm going to be ranking every single generational card from worst all the way to best in NBA 2K23. My team, including the 13 generational cards, the Dark Matters, the Galaxy Opals, the Pink Diamonds, and then also including the Invincible that dropped in the set, which is going to be Invincible T-Mac. I'll be ranking all these cards from the worst all the way to the best in, uh, best in game. So coming in at the number 14 spot is going to be the Pink Diamond Zach Levine. Also, let me know in the comment section down below, which is your guys' favorite card to use from the new generational promo. But Number 14, like I said, is going to be Pink Diamond Levine. He's just a 6'5 shooting guard, 6'8 wingspan, and he's going to be very similar to his Galaxy Opal, where they're both not just going to be that great shooting guards. You know, only 6'5, and their stats are going to be very, very similar. They're pretty much the same card. I mean, badge count wise, they're identical as well. Yeah, I mean, they're basically going to be the same card, except that he's got Gold Glove and Gold Interceptor added. And then even if you look at the animations, right, going to be the exact same animations on the card. So, I just don't think he's really going to be that good of a card. I do have Zach Levine coming in at the number 14 spot. At the 13 spot, though, is going to be Pink Diamond Lou Dort. I think he's slightly better than Levine just because of the defense he does bring to the table. Only a 6'3 point guard with a 6'8 wingspan, but at least he's going to be an elite level defender, stats and badges wise, having a 90 block, 98 steal, 98 lateral quickness, 98 perimeter, 94 interior defense. He's got tons and tons of good Hall of Fame defensive badges. You know, he can drive to the basket with a 98 driving dunk, Hall of Fame Limitless Takeoff, Post Riser. He's a super athletic card, 95 speed, 95 acceleration with a 97 vertical and a 92 strength. It just really comes down to the fact that his animations are pretty mediocre with the Kobe size up and the Kobe escape. Jump shot's going to be okay it's just really not that great of a release and he's only six foot three at the point guard position coming in at the number 12 spot though is going to be the galaxy Opal sean bradley now he's got 25 three ball and that's going to be the reason why he's super low yes he has 59 speed 59 acceleration but it's like just go ahead and use a mark eating card because he's going to be around the same height same wingspan but he's going to be a lot quicker and he also can't shoot the three ball and he's going to be slightly better so he's just another mark eating type of card and i think mark eating actually will be a little bit better in game i know he's seven foot six with a seven foot five wingspan but it's just like 25 three ball this time of the year i really don't think it's going to be that usable in game coming in at the number 11 spot a kind of underrated card from the set is Pink Diamond Jane Hardy because he does everything super well, except the fact that he's six foot three at the point guard position, and that's why I don't have him in my top ten for these generational cards because. He's got great stats and badges like, yeah, 47 block is low, but everything else is great defensively. Really good at going to the basket. He's got great playmaking stats and badges. He's super quick with 98 speed, 98 acceleration. He's got a very good jump shot with the John Stockton base and the Steph Curry upper. It's a super money release. And then he also does have the Trey Sigs. So if he was like six foot five or six foot six and, and, um, and had a higher block rating, I mean, he would low-key be like a top 10-ish point guard, top 10, 15 point guard in the game. But the fact that he's six foot three, I do think hurts the card a lot, but he's still going to be great overall. But I do have him at number 11. At the number 10 spot is going to be the Opal Sean Marion, just because I feel like he's a little bit more usable in game. Being a six foot seven small forward with a six foot 10 wingspan, he's going to give you great defense with a 95 block, 97 steal, 97 lateral quickness, 97 perimeter, 95 interior defense. So he's going to give you good defense you know with the hall of fame badges as well for the defensive badges and then he's great at going to the basket like he's just a great all-around card except his jump shot's gonna be very questionable in game if you guys remember from the pink diamond sean marion card he was solid even though his jump shot was the same base and same upper he was a solid all-around small forward card so i think he's just gonna be a little bit upgraded on his galley simple version coming in at the number nine spot though is gonna be pink diamond dyson daniels he's a point guard shooting guard six foot seven with a six foot ten wingspan and he's going to give you elite level defense. Like that's easily the best thing about Dyson is the fact that he's got a 90 block, 98 steal, 97 lateral quickness, 97 perimeter, 92 interior defense. He's got great, great Hall of Fame defensive badges and also the tendencies as well. 95 on ball steal 85 contest shot 85 block shot so the main thing about this card he's going to be an elite level defender just his jump shots a little bit questionable but does have really good dribble sigs with the james harden size up and the john wall escape coming in at the number eight spot is going to be the dark matter patrick ewing now i might actually put dyson daniels over ewing even though like i mean ewing is going to be such a good defender he's super athletic that's why i do think he's at number eight but his jump shot 
it's just going to be so questionable in game. I just don't know if this card's really going to be that good with his jump shot, but I will keep him at number eight. At the number seven spot is going to be Opal Chris Mullen. He's a small forward shooting guard, six foot seven with a six foot 10 wingspan, and he's going to be great offensively. 99 three ball, 98 mid range, tons and tons of good Hall of Fame shooting badges. He's going to be pretty quick, you know, decent at going to the basket. Jump shot wise, it's going to be his own base and his own upper. So his jump shot's like okay and game is just really not that great and then he does have the d book size up and the kobe escape so his movement's gonna be good just nothing too crazy but coming in at the number six spot is gonna be the dark matter jalen green a shooting guard point guard six foot six with a six foot seven wingspan and he's gonna be great offensively i was really torn between number six and number five because at number five i do have the galley simple harold minor i do think they're very similar point guards in game like they're both super athletic great at getting to the basket i I just think that uh, Harold Miner's got the better release, right? He's got the D Rose base with the Donovan Mitchell upper on very quick timing. And then if you look at Jalen Green's jump shot, it's going to be his own base and his own upper, which I don't think is really the best in game. And then Sigs wise, they're going to be very similar. You know, both have the Curry escape and then uh, Harold Miner's going to have the Curry size up where uh, Jalen Green does have the uh, Garland size up. So very similar cards. I do think Harold Miner's slightly better just because of their, just because of his jump shot, but both going to be very, very similar point guards, you know, on the six foot five six foot six range and i both think they're going to be super elite at the point guard position coming in at the number four spot though is going to be the dark matter shea now he doesn't have a new jump shot but he's still going to be a six foot six point guard with a six foot 11 wingspan like i mentioned though not going to get his jump shot changed to like a you know kpj base or something crazy like that but his release is not bad. Like if you guys use his Galaxy Opal or even his Diamond earlier in the year, I know this was like the best budget point guard in the game for a while. His jump shot's going to be pretty good on very quick timing. And then he also does have the Kyle Lowry size up, the Trey escape, quick drops off one, front clutches. He's got the D Mitch leaner. He's just going to be all around a great point guard in my team and should be very fun to use as well. Coming in at the number three spot though is going to be Galaxy Opal Cedric Maxwell. And he's basically a perfect card, except that he can't play the shooting guard position because his stats super well well rounded. I have no problems with his stats and his badges at all. It's just the fact that he's at the small four position. He is six foot eight, so not a bad height. But because he's got such a good jump shot with the O'Shea base, the Rudy Gay upper on very quick timing, he's got pretty good sigs, you know, normal leaner, quick drops off one, front clutches as well. Maybe not the best defensive tendencies, but the card's an absolute offensive threat at the small forward position. Just really wish he could play shooting guard. You know, I think I feel like that'd make him a lot better at the shooting guard position. At the number two spot, though, is going to be the Dark Matter Vince Carter. I think he's going to be so good in game, and I really hope he's not that expensive because he's six foot six at the two, six foot nine wingspan his stats and his badges are pretty much perfect 99 driving dunk 99 vertical we know right off the bat you know vince carter is going to get some crazy dunk packages and just really good slashing animations they gave him this defense his size up compared to, uh, compared to the fox size up that he did have on his galaxy opal so his movement should be a little bit quicker he's got the same jump shot as the galaxy opal but now it's going to be on very quick timing surprise they didn't give him a better leaner like the tray fader than normal but i still think offensively going to be a very fun and just overall great offensive shooting guard in the game for the dark matter vince carter and then at the number one spot a card that of course my team had to go ahead drop the t-mac invincible but when he first dropped he had the t-mac base and the t-mac upper and that wasn't really going to be that good i would say cedric maxwell vince carter would possibly be even better than t-mac if he kept his own release but of course and of course in good old my team fashion they changed his jump shot to the kpj base the oscar robertson upper which he obviously did have on his uh, on his own dark matter so I, i'm surprised that they you know first off changed it back to his own base own upper so thank god that they actually you know gave him his own uh, they, it's hard to explain because it's very confusing. So normal T-Mac, right? Like his pink diamond has the T-Mac base, has the T-Mac upper, right? That's his base actual jump shot. But then on his dark matter, they went ahead and they changed it back in February. They changed it to the KPJ base and the Oscar Robertson upper. But then when they first released this invincible, he had his pink diamond jump shot, the T-Mac base, the T-Mac upper on a uh, very quick timing. But then they went ahead and they changed it to what the dark matter has, which is the KPJ base, the Oscar upper on very quick timing. And that's going to be the best jump shot in the game and such a fast release that now tracy mcgrady is the best shooting guard in the game and probably one of the best cards because he's got 55 hall of fame badges and 99 in every single stat category so let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about my ranking but that's going to be me ranking every single every single generational card from worst all the way to best in nba 2k 23 my team but hopefully you guys did enjoy and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace